So what happened? Because I want to talk. I want to talk about this. That, that actually, there's something instructive in the Memphis series loss to Golden State that will help us going forward as we try to figure out how this thing is going to uh, play out starting tomorrow in San Francisco Warriors Celtics. But before we get to all that, I want you to tell me from your perspective. Uh, and I know the lenses that you look through at times because you work, you work for Memphis. You work for the organization. I get it. Um, but what happened in game six that prevented that game seven from happening? So now you're there with a nice, nice, fresh hairdo and no <laughs> arena, not like no, no, no people in the arena. So what happened there? Okay, so what happened in game six, let's not forget, we did not have John Morant. And yes, I know on the show, I told you guys that with this group, what we do have is we have that next man up mentality. And so we're used to, we're accustomed to seeing the next guy come up. But I will say for Golden State, I, you have to give credit to them. I wasn't shocked that they put on the performance that they did have. But what happened in game six was Clay Thompson. We hadn't seen that Clay Thompson throughout the whole entire series. And yes, we knew going into it that Clay Thompson likes to six is like his favorite number apparently and he likes to show up and show out in game six performances but clay thompson was like the difference maker for the golden state warriors and what you saw is the golden state they showed that they've been here before they have that experience they showed that they're the the vets in the league who yes can make it to the nba finals for the sixth time in eight years meanwhile while the grizzlies we just have a, a few holes to figure out and I do think that if we were like a fully healthy team, especially without our star, it probably would have been a little different. And we could have probably taken it to a game seven situation. See, see, this is something. This is something. Now, now, this is just really fun. Because when we talked to you, you didn't mention John Morant. Yeah, like, I, well, because I you can't. I, I brought that up. And you and Michael Smith, I'm, I'm going to call you both out. He's not here to defend himself. So what? Uh, come to work, you can defend yourself. So yeah. you and Michael Smith. You and Michael Smith, like, oh, Memphis has got momentum. Golden State is in trouble. I'm like, well, wait a minute. They don't have John Morant. They don't have their best player. And they're going to San Francisco. They're down three to two. How are they in trouble? Y'all didn't want to hear it. And so you lose game six, close game, well contested, well played, all that. And now we're going to talk about John Morant. Hmm, that's interesting. You can't not not talk John Moran, but the reason why you can't bring John Moran up because we saw the record, we saw the numbers throughout the regular season is like what this team has done without John Moran, what they went 21 and five without Ja. And I, you gotta say it's impressive. So when you go into a situation where you're not gonna have your star, but as I mentioned, Clay Thompson hadn't shown up. He felt, he, he mm. seemed as if he was just kind of like missing or he was just there going with the flow. But if Clay is going to come into a game and shoot like he did in a game six, and yes, it's super hard to win in a situation like that at the Chase Center. I think what it came down to is just like one quarter where the Grizzlies they could have turned it on a you know a little bit more. But you have to bring up Job because he is the guy. Think about it. Like this is a guy who you know made all the All NBA team. He's he's the guy that made all you know the All Star. He's a starter. You can't. You have to bring him up, but of course, I wasn't going to doubt my team. I, I, one thing about me, and I told you guys this, I am a Memphian, and I don't go up and down with it. I've been a Grizzlies fan. I work for the team now, but I'm going to stick with my guys, and I trusted, I, I trusted them. I had faith that the team could have done it. We saw what a Game 5 happened. I just think Game 6, uh, Golden State just turned it on too much, and I think what Golden State even did against the Dallas Mavericks, they've shown and they've proven that the regular season really doesn't matter. They've been this postseason team. And the Grizzlies are, are taking note. We have taken note, and don't you worry. Don't you worry, Michael. Okay. Bring me back All on right, next see. year. Bring me back on next year because go. it's going to be a different story. I like it. So you, you've led me right to the, the place I want to go after the game. So Golden State wins at the Chase Center. And it was really a good game uh, in, until, you know, late in the fourth quarter, Golden State started to pull away from that thing. They win it. Series over four games to two. And, and you know, they do. I, I love this. I don't know about you, Megan. I love this in all sports. It's just like it kind of I'm a crier anyway. It kind of pulls on my heartstrings. I like when people have competed and then, they, you know, and then they hug it out and they and, and, and you know, pat yeah. each other on the chest and say, hey, here are words of encouragement. You know, you go ahead, go ahead and win that thing. Oh, man, you were tough to defend. And I really appreciated this opportunity. All the all the sweet things, all the sweet things were said. But this one stood out to me and I want to get your take on it. Listen to what Dylan Brooks said after the game six elimination loss to the Warriors. Here it is. 
Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.